It's the time for the package from China. Let's go. It's the time for the retro or yeah, retro combo. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. It's awesome that you're tuning in because in this video we are going to take a close look at one of those consoles I rarely pick up, those weird looking double slot ones. So this means that you can actually play two kind of systems in yeah, or two kind of cartridges in one system. You know, it's kind of weird to be honest. I don't know if this is going to be the Retron, you know, the Retron 5 you have seen from Hyperkin. I think this is something different. I think it's something... Uh, or maybe it's any good. The question remains, what are we going to get? It comes with Famicom games or Mega Drive combination. It's really weird. But nevertheless, I just wanted to check it out for you, just to see what are we going to get. So there is no HDMI, so this is going to be some old school one. So it says it plays NES 8-bit cartridges in Sega Genesis. We're going to just slap some game cartridge in here, just actually to see what we're going to get. Yeah, it's a little bit bust up. Oh man, it's already unfortunate. But that doesn't matter. And let's see what are we going to get in the inside. So it's brand new, I bought it from Aliexpress, just to see actually for you guys, is this any good to picking it up. So the controllers, oh boy, they did some weird things with it. And with weird things, I mean, look at this, like, they look so weird. They look really cheap and they are quite sturdy, but I was getting the feeling the D-pads of these things or the floating D-pads are way too high compared with the original controller. But it also makes the thing feeling really weird. We have the slow button, you know, can you still remember the days that slow button, you'll be pressing it and it goes to start every single time. Super annoying. I've always find it really pointless. So the overall quality of the button, it's quite okay. We do have like some wiggling going on, but not too much. Are you saying it's going to be bad? Long cable. The weird thing is I'm guessing we can play Famicom games with the same controller. So the weight of the console feels quite quite nice to be honest like it's not the cheap the cheap cheap you have seen before and that is quite surprising over here we're going to get the switch and the switch is quite interesting design pressing it up it goes to the famicom pressing it down integration into the mega drive or genesis okay so we have a reset button over here to cartridge slot so we can talk together sing together <laughs> but okay you're getting the point at the back we do have like a lot of options we do have hdmi in like See, this is the thing that that do I have a that's kind of weird it doesn't even show hdmi on the bot okay but it does have hdmi yeah okay that is quite confusing so like i am saying you do have like the option for an express ratio over here and we do have like two switches for different regions av out micro here we go micro usb for the power so this thing will be booted up within five volt and of course the hdmi surprising and the power supply is quite decent quality like when you're looking at this uh, take consideration when you're buying these things from aliexpress you always need to like check the box with like you which kind of version you're having and if you don't have the box double check if you actually go to get the european or the us version of where you're living uh, i think these things are like multi volt or multi region so you can see over here we have like 100 volts to 240 volts it's more the moment of the plug over here but again like it's just micro usb you can i think you can even use like a normal phone charger if you want to this thing is only one amp so that's not even that much to be honest and of course an hdmi cable a very long one not going to need it so that one goes back in the box but let's take a close look at the famicom part and of course the sega mega drive part so it have like multiple games i have ball games let's say different like regions and of course we go to try out the converter everything let's see like actually what can we play with this thing because i am really curious now okay so it's actually like a famicom player so the normal cartridges will not fit in this thing yeah boohoo okay so putting the game in it's going to be super easy we do have like a lot of space in the cartridge slot another thing i really like is that you can pull out the games fairly easy let's boot this thing on and let's see if it's going to be actually working another thing we also going to need to play with a sega my good drive control what to say that actually but this thing is so freaking loud let's lower the volume <laughs> I just wanted to do a quick gameplay of this, just actually how this works out. So far, so good. Everything seems to be working fine. A very beautiful image comes out of the system itself. So let's mess around with the express ratio. Oh, you don't need to do that. And let's give it a reset. But the express ratio doesn't do anything. That's just a fact. Okay, so that is a little bit of a bummer that you cannot really change it out. Mm. 
But after reboot, it uh, seems to be booting himself in the 4x3 express ratio, so that's great. So when it comes to all of those features, that seems to be working just fine. Okay, so the controller is absolutely garbage when it comes to the controls. This doesn't do anything at all, like they play absolutely horrible. Oh boy. See, this one I mean with the slow button. <laughs> That's so bad. The next thing I wanted to try out is of course the Mega Drive part. I'm just gonna be honest, like I was really curious about it, even more than the Famicom part. We have like a lot of cheap stuff, like cheap HDMI stuff over there. But I just wanted to check out how this actually works if we're going to get a good image. Okay, so that is cool. I'm going to see this because this means like the region look this seems to be still working. All right, so let's turn this thing in a different region. I think it's this switch that I need to have. Let's put it back. Come on. Ooh, that's a little bit of a problem that it doesn't recognize it. the switch. Oh, there we go. Holy crap. Okay, still having this weird thing going on. Okay, so let's go mess around with the other settings. I don't know if this has any effect on it. Do I going to get a better signal? Nope, not going to get any better signal out there. Let's put the express ratio bed in position. 16 by 9. No, so I did have this problem earlier with some of the systems that we have like this weird thing going on with Paul games. Hmm, that is a problem. So where are we going to put it in Paul mode? It will give like a completely messed up signal and with a different region like Japan now it seems to be working up. So basically when I started miss like the Paul like pull the Paul version I'm like used to that does work get this weird messed up screen but this thing is all supported basically in the Japanese region. Okay, audio time. And just to be honest like you do have like that weird ping 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 that sounds a little bit different but overall. Okay so let's get into the gameplay. Another thing I want to try out just to see actually if we can play some Sonic 3 and Knuckles on this because this is a big problem with these closes but also this will be recognized by the system itself. The pointless turbo or slow mode. <laughs> Quite annoying. But yeah, so I must say that also when it comes to like compatibility with a lot of cartridges, even like the cartridges thing over here works very well. There's only one particular card I want to try out is of course Virtual Racer because that is a game cartridge that doesn't work great with many systems. The music is so off with this, I can just hear it. The soundtrack, I can dream it. And like I already suspected is that we're going to get ourselves like just one static color. Let's give myself some more lighting by the way. Yep, there we go. All right, so the next thing we can maybe do is mess around with the settings and don't know what happened. Oh crap, I pulled the power, I pulled the power. But even if you're going to mess around with the power, of course, and then switching between the regions, you can see like I'm going to still getting the static thing going on, the one single color. So yeah, when it comes to virtual racing, so far I know there is no single clone I have tested that actually plays this. Multicards with this device are no problem whatsoever. Another thing I wanted to try out is the classic 201, just a random cartridge that I'm laying around. Let's boot up Street of Rage 2. 
And yep, yeah, they're using the pal ROM. That is absolutely clear because I've been missing with the tiny buttons at the back again. But you just want to, I just wanted to show you it actually boots up. Okay, so basically this is a cartridge-based system to play your Famicom games and Mega Drive games or Genesis games. It's multi-region with HDMI. What I find kind of interesting is when you're going to boot up the system without a game plugged in. Then we're going to get even like some more interesting things. Yep, we have Famicom games that seem to be on here. And we're going to boot up into the Mega Drive. We also go to get ourselves built-in Mega Drive slash Genesis games. It will take up a little bit longer than this Famicom. Yeah. It has some... Okay, this is really weird. Come on, boot up. Because there are games on the inside. But sometimes it doesn't recognize it. Kind of weird. But okay, you see, they're here. So let's try a couple of them. Just see actually what it is. Let's start with the Famicom part. Alright, so let's boot up the game itself. The first thing I noticed, and unfortunate, the menu is a little bit messed up. But when you guys go to play in the game itself, we don't have any issues whatsoever. You've got problem, you run into my fist. Come. So when it comes to actually the gameplay, it's not bad at all. Also the controller, what I've noticed, like you need to press the button sometimes quite hard to even get like some response. But what I do like, the other buttons you apparently don't use normally. Of course, we're only having like A, B buttons. The other ones will be configured automatically as turbo buttons. So that is a very cool feature. Okay, so let's boot up the Mega Drive once again. And I've noticed like sometimes I just need to have like a couple of th attempts that get this to work. Like, hello, 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 is something. I don't know what the hell is going on with this thing. Come on. There we go. Come, come. Yeah, there we go. Here we, here we go. Here it comes. Yeah. All right. Cool. So the game list is quite huge. Like 171. I don't know if it's going to be all like the same games. Or I still see like a lot of cool games. For example, Rock and Roll Racing. So Street of Rage 2. Let's see what kind of file they're using with this. For example, Street of Rage 2. Let's boot it up. Still messed up. Because it means they're using the PAL file itself. Yeah, I think the multi game card that's built in this thing is not great. Because like we had a lot of issues, but there we go. It loads up like a very long. Hello, hello, there is no screen. I do have audio, but what the hell is going on? Yeah, okay, that is kind of weird. What I actually really like about this, if you're going to boot up a game, so let's say we're going to play some beefcake turn in the Wolfie. So this does have like, give you an instant image. Pressing the reset button will automatically bring you very fast back into the game itself. So that's pretty damn awesome in my opinion. So when it comes to that, like that part, where actually when the system has been booted up, then we actually can play the game. But let's, you know what, let's play a couple of games. Just see actually if everything works or at least a couple of the games. <laughs> that sounded really bad. I'm just going to be honest, it's a quite interesting story with this. You can actually play games on it, but also have built-in games. Yeah, okay, it's a Mega Driver Genesis version. Like, there are even some Russian ROMs on here. Like, what the hell is going on? So, they're, like, kind of buggy. You know, like, Sonic and a couple of them are, like, absolutely garbage. So, the Mega Drive part didn't really work that well, in my opinion. I know, like, a lot of people love me tearing down some stuff. So, let's do that with the Retroid device. Yeah, just I do. That looks kind of weird, to be honest. There was no screw whatsoever. <laughs> Whatever, automatically. Oh, uh, let's be naughty and let's break the seal. 
I think I've got all of the screws out now, so let's lift up the top cover. Ooh, I always need to be very, very gentle. You can see like the ribbon cable is basically like stuck to the PCB at the front. Also, everything must say they did an amazing job with gluing the stuff. So electronic wise, it does is a very interesting thing going on over here. Especially when you're looking at this part, like it's like, wow, what the hell were they doing over there? So when you're looking at the PCB, let's hold this thing like that so I cannot like rip and tear it. And when you're looking at the inside, especially with those multi-system, it's a quite interesting piece of technology. So we have like multiple, like say crazy, like a lot of PCBs in here now. So first of all, we're having like the front PCB. Then we're having like the control ports, the micro switch for reset. And of course the on and off switch over here or the switch that have like three settings like off. NES and the Mega Drive part. Then over here having like the PCB over here and that is quite interesting one. Something I've never seen before. So when you're looking closely you can see like the production dates the same all the other ones but it says over here I think it's FB Sega or nevertheless it's like the FC. This basically this is the one that makes it possible. It has been connected with the front board so maybe this is the PCB. And to be honest with you guys like I did some research, I couldn't really figure it out, like what is PCB for, like, and I'm thinking, like, because it's connected over here, that will is needed for, like, configuration of both of the units for the control panel, that they need to stick this thing between them. Nevertheless, it's a quite interesting piece of technology. Like, going all the way up there, we have, like, two separate PCBs with a chip. One is the Famicom, of course, and the Mega Drive version, both made in 2020. And here having the chip itself, the TCT 6803, a chip itself that has been used on most of these clone systems. And then we're having like, of course, here the Famicom. And all the way up there we're having like the input and output PCB for the signal out and the input for the micro USB. For the power. For the power. Absolutely power. All right, so this is what we're going to get with the Retroid 2-in-1. And I'm just going to be honest with you. It's like, this is a quite interesting, like, say, concept. The controller, yeah, absolutely garbage. I really hated it. But the thing is, the system does have, like, the issues, like, all those Mega Drive clones with the audio. But when you're looking at the overall quality, like, it do have, like, a decent signal out, multi-region, SPS ratio, and we're having, like, the two slots for playing games and built-in games. Yeah, even the built-in games on the Mega Drive were not super great. But yeah, let me know in the comments what do you think of those dual systems. Would you like consider picking it up? Let me know in the comments. Thanks for watching. Consider subscribing. Hit that little bell. And it will be great to see you in the next video. Yeah.